Rod here again. We're going to attempt a Sager firing today. Um, going to load these pots up and uh, talk as I go instead of staring at the camera. All right, what we're doing here is called a Sager firing. I won't go into why or how, but anyhow, what we're doing is we're going to put some different kinds of combustibles in these cans, uh, put some nice white pots in there. These pots have been coated with a very fine white slip and in this case a little bit of uh, red slip, very fine, polished. We're going to put some combustibles in these containers, uh, load the pots in them, uh, fire them to about oh, 1400 degrees and hopefully the pots will take on some interesting coloration. All right, so I think this one can just go on the bottom of the can. We'll start loading with some uh, pine pet bedding. And uh, what this will probably do, hopefully, is give us a nice black color on the bottom of the pot, hopefully. Uh, I like to pack it pretty tightly. Um, that seems to give the best color. Didn't want to really do that. A little on the inside is okay. And like I said, I try to pack it down pretty tightly. And then we'll put some other interesting stuff in here. Let's see. Try to get an idea how far up that is. That looks pretty good. Let me put a little more in it. Pack it pretty tightly. This I have done before with uh, mixed mixed results. It's not quite as exciting as uh, the Raku firing. Hopefully no flames uh, shooting up. Although that has happened. <laughs> um, all right. So there's some uh, pet bedding. Then we'll do a little uh, little bit of assorted tea for pottery firing. This is all kinds of tea that we didn't like. So uh, this tends to give a little bit of a uh, yellow brown coloration. You know, the closer you can get it up next to the pot, which I'm not doing very well, actually gives a uh, Get some color. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Uh, this will give us a little line of brown above the black. And above that, I'm going to try to leave some uh, room there for some uh, just plain white to show through. Hopefully, again with these kinds of things, you uh, are never quite sure exactly how it's going to come out. That's either the excitement or the downfall of this uh, this kind of firing. Let's see what else have I got around here. Ah yes, dried banana peels. This has actually worked pretty well in the past. Some of these aren't, aren't too dry though. Unfortunately it rained last night. Uh, kind of got these wet and kind of got sand all over them. But What I'm going to try to do here is uh, going to be tough with the lid. Get these on the top. Whoops. No, this is not going to work as well as I hoped. Get these on the top edge of the pot. I'm going to try to drape them around here. And eh, well, this is going well. Kind of wedge them around here a little bit. Of course, when I pick this up to put it into the kiln, these are all going to fall, of course, but yeah. how about that? How about we go over to the kiln and uh, do it there? Ready? Here we are over at the converted electric kiln, which I fire with uh, propane and a burner. Again, trying to place uh, these banana peels where I want them, which is along the side here, which isn't going to work that well, but maybe some of these I can drape over over the side where I want it. This tends to give a yellowish, orangish 
color when it works. Um, seems to work better where it's right up against the pot, which I don't know if it's going to work this time or not. But again, that's either the excitement or the downfall of this kind of technique is uh, whether something actually works or not. But uh, we'll see, huh? Just fall in there. Well, we're done packing the uh, popcorn tin with uh, the pot and combustibles. Uh, what you see here is uh, dried banana peels and then I poured a little more loose tea over the top of that. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, get some interesting colors. For this one uh, there are some holes poked in the bottom of the tin to let oxygen in. And for the lid, I'm just going to prop this open. I don't want to cut off uh, the oxygen or actually trap too much smoke in there. I don't want the entire pot to be black. Again, this is all experimental and we'll see what happens. And like I said, I've done this a few times, but not enough to know exactly what's going to happen. So that's the first one. Uh, on to the second one. Number two. I'm going to be a little more experimental with this one. Or maybe that's just mental. Anyway, a little bit of uh, animal bedding. Put a little bit of black on the bottom of this. Let me see how much. And a little bit more. That might be good. All right, try to. calls a hamburger helper hand, I don't know why. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to try something uh, different. This is a little bit of dry, inexpensive dog food. It's supposed to have right, well, loaded this sagger with uh, some pine animal bedding, some dried dog food, uh, a little bit of tea over the top of that, and kind of wrapped some uh, fine copper wire around the pot. Uh, that maybe will give us some green, but most likely that'll just be black, in my experience. And I got a few banana peels left. Maybe uh, I'll just drop them in there, so laying against the pot, maybe they'll give me a little something. So this one's a little bit more experimental. I don't know how exactly this one's going to come out. Uh, the other one, I hope to get a certain effect. This one, uh, I'm not so sure. Oh, more pieces of dog food. Um, all right. I think that's uh, about all I'm going to do to that one. All right, and we'll take that over to the kiln and load that one in too. Here's uh, pot number two going in. A little bit of a tighter fit than I'd like. Um, this one I'm actually putting on the lid with some holes poked on the top and holes poked around the sides on the bottom. And hopefully this pot won't be completely black, but uh, we will see. Gonna put the lid on here. Leave a little slot there as a chimney or flue, if you will. And uh, next step is we'll get this lit up and uh, try not to set ourselves on fire. Well, the burner's now lit and uh, on very low. And uh, let's see. We're at about, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, 100 and some odd degrees. I like to start out uh, slow. If there happens to be any moisture in anything, uh, burn the moisture out. And uh, so there's no problems with cracking or exploding or anything like that, although that would be exciting. And uh, I'll update you as uh, this goes along. Update you on our Sager firing here. 
we're up to about uh, 400 degrees. I've uh, turned the burner up a couple of times and uh, you get the faint smell of uh, tea burning off. That seems to be the first thing uh, to burn off. Yeah, smells like tea. Uh, update you uh, as we go along. We want our Sager firing as we continue on here. Uh, we reached about 1150 degrees. Uh, most of the smoking has stopped. It smoked heavily from about 500 degrees to about 1,000 degrees. Uh, burners up all the way. Uh, gas is about empty. Uh, like I said, no more smoke really coming out of here. I think all the combustibles, whatever's going to burn, will burn. Uh, actually, just, I'm just going to let it go until we run out of gas just to see uh, how high I can get the temperature on this kiln because I'm interested in using this kiln to bisque in but I haven't quite been able to get it up to temperature enough uh, where it would be enough to bisque. So some of this is just experimental on what I can get this kiln to do with this burner and this tank and this regulator. And uh, so we're about done. And uh, when the gas is done, we're done. And uh, when it cools off enough, we'll see the pots. I wanted to show you the results of our uh, Sager firing. Uh, that I did yesterday, it got too late, it was dark, to show you the results, such as they are. Well, you know, sometimes things don't turn out the way you expect them to, especially in these kind of methods. So, uh, this pot, which turned almost completely black, and there's a little bit of real nice uh, black metallic at the bottom. Uh, this is the one that was in a little bit of uh, pet bedding, with some copper wire around it, and I had put some uh, dog food, dry dog food, and uh, some other stuff in there. Uh, apparently, what happened was uh, because the can was too closed up, not enough oxygen getting in, even though I did poke a lot of holes in it, uh, what happened is this just absorbed uh, smoke from the uh, pet bedding uh, smoldering. Uh, it's actually not a bad pot. Uh, it's just not what I expected. Uh, we'll put some wax on this and see what it looks like, and I may just leave it like that and not refire it. Uh, the other one was this uh, nice round lidded pot. Uh, this had uh, mainly pet bedding, a little bit of uh, loose tea, and uh, banana peels. Um, around the top, as you can see, it's mostly black, white, and gray. Uh, you probably can't see on there is actually a little bit of uh, sort of brown or umber or something on here. Uh, again, not what I was looking for or expecting, but uh, just to show that sometimes uh, when you're doing these types of techniques, uh, especially when we haven't done them a lot of times, uh, like I haven't, I've done this one uh, a couple of times, you don't get what you expect and it is really all about uh, experimentation. Uh, the pots are fine. They didn't break, no cracks. Uh, we didn't set anyone or anything on fire, so uh, I'll call it a success, sorta. See you next time.